la préposition a. Okay, so in the previous lesson, I've been introducing the modification of this preposition a when it's combined with articles. Okay, so I would definitely uh, advise you to watch it if you didn't. Uh, and then in that lesson, we'll discover well the different uses of uh, la preposition a, and you'll see that <laughs> it's a long video. Why? Just because a could mean or could be translated in English with at, in, to, to, and then I explain you the reason why we've got this second to here, because it will be the from something to something, okay, so that's the main reason why we've got the, the two, uh, two twos, <laughs> and then it could be translated with on, and then other uh, meanings and other uh, uses of uh, this uh, preposition. Okay, so we'll start with at, if that's okay with you, and so. A few examples, the first one, so if you want to translate it with this at, would be il reste à la maison. Rester is to stay, okay, and in that case we would construct it with à, okay. Il reste, he stays, à la maison, at home, okay. Il reste à la maison. Second example, uh, we could use this conduire, okay, conduire is to drive, and then when you want to introduce the speed, okay, in that case it's 40 km heure, then you would use this a, okay, so at 40 km per hour. Je conduis à 40 km heure. Je conduis à 40 km heure, okay. And then the last example we could have for this at, it's for the price, like here, à 10 euros. Le prix, the price, est fixé, okay, à 10 euros. Okay, so in that case, it would be translated by this at, but then in that case, well, here, we would use this à in French. Okay, so, il reste à la maison. Je conduis à 40 km heure. Le prix est fixé à 10 euros. Okay, so, if you want to express this at, concept for these uh, situations, then you will have to use this preposition A. Okay, so let's see now the second uh, category we will have and it will be this in concept. So the first one, mon frère est au lit. Okay, mon frère, my brother, est, is au lit in bed. Lee is bed. Okay, mon frère est au lit. Second example, il est à la campagne. Campagne, country, countryside, okay. Il est à la campagne. All right, so in that case, it will be used, I mean, we will use this preposition à, okay. And then the last one, so if you want to introduce a town, okay, you want to use this habité, habité is to live, okay. J'habite à Paris. All right, you can see we don't put any articles, just the name of the town. J'habite, I live in Paris. J'habite à Paris. All right, so, mon frère est au lit, il est à la campagne, j'habite à Paris. Okay, so if you want to, well, translate uh, this in concept that would be in English, then it should be à, with, as we saw the combination with the articles, if needed, and the modification, au lit, à la campagne, à Paris. All right, let's see another use of a, and it would be to. A few examples. Je rentre à la maison. Okay, so in that case, uh, rentrer, it's to go back. All right, so je rentre à la maison. And when we want to introduce this concept, then we should use this à la maison. Je rentre à la maison. Second thing, nous allons, allons is to, aller is to go, okay, à Marseille. Nous allons à Marseille. Okay, so we go to, all right, so in that case you should use this preposition à. All right, then... Il donne un conseil, okay, donner is to give, un conseil, an advice, 
Okay, so he gives an advice. A sa fi, sa fi, his daughter. So in that case, to his daughter, you should use also this preposition a. Okay, so je rentre à la maison. Nous allons à Marseille. Il donne un conseil à sa fille. All right. And so now, whoops, we'll see the second use of this to, okay, but it, when it's combined with the preposition de, like here. So de would be from, and then you put something, and a will be the to. All right. So je travaille, travailler is to work. De, so from, 8 heures à 17 heures. Okay, so it's really the from to. Okay, so in this example it's quite traditional, quite classic because we introduce the, the, the hours or the time. Okay, so from to. Let's see another example now. Il sera, remember, sera, it's to be, but the future form. Il sera en France du 15 juin. Okay, so here you've got a, a date. And if you look carefully, you've got this du. So it does mean that normally you should put the article le 15 juin. And that's true, the reason why we've been combining the two. And it becomes du. Okay, we've been seeing that in a previous lesson. So... If it's not clear, watch it. Du 15 juin au, same thing here, we've got the preposition a, but then combine with the same article, so le, okay, and it will become au, 22 juillet. All right, so in that situation, you can see that it's exactly the same concept, but as we use the articles, then we've got to modify the, the, the prepositions. Okay, so il sera en France du 15 juin. 22 juillet. And the last example that we can have. Ce train, this train, okay, va, so goes, de Rennes à Paris. Okay, and in that case, we just put the name of the towns, okay, de Rennes à Paris. But then in that case, so whether it's à 17h ou 22 juillet à Paris, so the concept is it's this to, okay, but then it is combined with the, the, and then remember the with the articles, and it will change, so in that case it, it would be to, all right? Another possibility would be the concept of this on, okay, so let's see a few examples here. Ce film, this movie, est à la télé, okay, on TV. À la télé, okay, we've got this A here, and then la télé. So télé, of course, it's for télévision, okay, but in most of the cases, we don't use in French this télévision, the full word, we just use this télé word, okay. Ce film est à la télé. Second example, mon ami, my friend, habite, habite is to live, au, so same thing here, you've got this preposition, but it's combined with le, so it becomes and then cinquième étage, cinquième, fifth, and then étage, floor. So in that case, you want to say that your friend is living on the fifth floor, okay? And in that case, we will get to use this a preposition. Third example, il y a une horloge, okay, a clock, au mur, okay, so same thing here, okay, le mur, the wall, okay, but then... We combine A and L and it becomes O, okay, au mur. Il y a une horloge au mur. So let's read them one more time. Ce film est à la télé. Mon ami habite au cinquième étage. Il y a une horloge au mur. All right. And now let's see all the other possibilities that we've got. Okay. So with verbs... Because some verbs, and it's only examples here, because uh, we've got many verbs, verbs that will require this preposition uh, à, okay? So, parler, parler à, to talk to, penser à, okay, to think about someone or something, arriver à, okay, to succeed, to do something, okay? So, in that case, you should use this 
preposition a with these verbs okay you will see that normally the way students do is that they will remember these prepositions and the combination of verbs and preposition little by little so when you will encounter a new verb with a preposition the idea is to try to write it or to try to memorize it and uh, that's the way it's, it will uh, it will go okay so same thing you can combine this preposition a with adjectives for instance interdit a or then prêt a interdit it's forbidden prêt ready okay so in that case you should combine these adjectives with the preposition a okay so it's possible to use this preposition a when you want to express or to to tell how it is done okay so for instance when you want to say that it's been done it's been machine done or hand how do you say handmade yeah you use this fait so faire is to do okay but then in that case it would be done okay a la machine fait a la main all right second use when you want to use this travel concept so venir is to come okay so if you want to, to say that you, well to come by something okay uh, here it's pied foot vélo and then motorbike okay so the concept in french is that if you're not inside so like um, a car a train tramway subway so if you're not inside then normally the concept would be to use this preposition a okay when you want to use this come go okay by uh, so you should use this a preposition okay but then keep in mind that in many cases french people tend to use when it comes to vélo moto well you can listen and you can hear uh, quite many times this en instead of a not really for pied because uh, well french people will still use this a pied okay because it's like a common expression but still for vélo and moto many persons will will use this en okay uh, officially it should be a mistake but then many persons are using it so just be ready and try to remember that it's possible that you will hear this en vélo uh, on their en, uh, en moto okay if you want to describe something okay so for instance la personne au manteau vert okay so in that case you want to say that uh, this is the person who is wearing uh, uh, the green jacket okay au manteau vert so in that case it's always the same so a and le combine and it will become au or then you know in that case it can be red hair okay so cheveux roux uh, so in that case it's the plural okay a plus les and it will become au like that but it's quite common to use this a okay and then you want to describe a person so it's also uh, quite commonly used if you want to talk about food, for instance, un gâteau au chocolat. All right. So un gâteau au chocolat, same thing here, à le, okay, un gâteau au chocolat, or then un croissant aux amandes, un croissant aux amandes. So gâteau, cake, chocolat, chocolate, croissant, it's this uh, classical French pastry, and then amandes, almonds, okay? And then the use, so for instance, if you want to uh, make a difference between, because une cuillère it's a spoon, okay, so coffee spoon will be une cuillère à café, all right, so in that case we've got to use this preposition à as well, or then une machine à laver, washing machine, so une machine à laver. Another option would be the owner so if you want to say la maison so the house est à mon frère okay so belongs to my brother so in that case we use this être to be okay and then à here mon frère my brother okay well, then you could use you could say ce chien this dog is mine so est is à moi so it's possible like we've been seeing here to put a noun after or then you could put a pronoun like here à moi or then you could put the name of the person 
c'est à Eric, ok, does it belong to Eric, c'est à Eric, so it's a question in that case, all right. So it's quite, quite commonly used this uh, ah when you want to uh, say that uh, the person is owning the thing, okay. And then the time, so if you want to uh, use this rendez-vous, so let's meet, à 20 heures, okay, so in that case you should use this à and then you put the time, à 8 heures du matin, for instance. The pain. Normally, we've got this expression. So when you say that, uh, when you want to say that, uh, well, you've got an ache, something somewhere in your body. So, avoir mal, and then a, all right? And then you will combine it with the article. So, ventre would be like stomach, okay? So, stomach ache would be avoir mal O ventre, so obviously this O is A plus LE, so that's the reason why it's like that, okay, ventre is masculine. So if it's uh, tête, la tête, head, headache, A la tête, okay, so same structure, avoir mal à la tête. And then, in that case, pied, foot, au pied, okay, avoir mal au pied, okay, so in that case you get the, the plural form. And the last thing that we'll use this preposition A for, it's when you want to say goodbye. So if you notice that probably, uh, we say A demain, so see you tomorrow, A demain. Um, A bientôt, bientôt soon, see you soon. A tout à l'heure, so it's a, in a few minutes or uh, in a while. A tout à l'heure, okay? A demain, a bientôt. A tout à l'heure. So in that case, you should definitely use this preposition A if you want to say these things. La preposition de. Okay, so in the previous lesson, it was la preposition A. And the lesson before, it was the combination of these two prepositions when you've got articles after. So if you didn't watch them, please do. It will be more easy for you. So let's start now. La préposition de, so we'll see the different uses that we can have of this préposition de, and especially the meaning in English. Okay, so the first use that we could have or we could spot for this préposition de is the partitif. So in French, partitif. Okay, so a few examples here. Il boit du café. Okay, boire is to drink. Du café, café, coffee. And then here, well, we've got the partitive form, so it's some coffee, okay? And then remember that we've got the preposition de, but then when it's combined with this le, it becomes du, okay? That's the partitive form, il boit du café. And then ex other examples, sorry. Second example, elle prend de la salade, okay? Prendre is to take de la salade, some salad, okay? So, elle prend de la salade. Okay, first use of this preposition de, it's this partitive concept. All right. Second use will be the translation of from in English. Okay, so a few examples. Je viens de Paris. Venir is to come. I come from Paris. Okay, so in that case, really this de would be translated with from. Okay, un appel. So appel is a call. De ma mère, from my mother. Okay, so it's exactly this from concept in English. Okay, so let's see now another possibility. When you want to introduce this belonging concept, okay, then usually you should use this preposition de, like here, l'ordinateur de Samuel. Okay, so with this structure you want to say that l'ordinateur, the computer, belongs to Samuel. All right, so in that case, you should use this de. So it's quite simple because you just put the word, well, the noun, and after that you put this de and the name of the person, okay? It could be also, like here, la voiture, the car, of the neighbor, in that case, yeah, du voisin, voisin is the neighbor, okay? And then, well, in that case, if you look carefully, you've got the preposition de, combined with the article le, the, neighbor, okay, and it becomes du, all right. Other possibility, l'ami, the friend, de mon père, okay, my father, of my father. So it's really this belonging, something or someone is belonging 
in a way to something or some, someone as well. Okay, so l'ordinateur de Samuel, la voiture du voisin, l'ami de mon père. Okay, so let's see now another possibility of the use of uh, la préposition de when you want to introduce this containing concept. Like here, for instance, une boîte, a box, de chocolat. Okay, so, so inside the box you've got chocolates, okay, and then une boîte de chocolat. Okay, so the use of de, in that case, it's quite clear, it's just because it, I mean, les chocolats sont contenus dans la boîte. Une boîte, une bouteille d'eau, okay, bottle of water, okay, and so in that case you should use this de, okay, but then obviously because you've got first here a vowel, okay, a, uh, uh, they don't really get along, so as usual in French, a uh, disappear, and you get this apostrophe, une bouteille d'eau, okay, une bouteille, bottle, eau, water, a bottle of water, une boîte de chocolat, une bouteille d'eau, okay, so in that case, definitely you should use this preposition de, okay, so if you want to introduce the fact that it's made of something, then for instance here, un rideau, so rideau is curtain, and then de lin, lin is linen, un rideau de lin, okay, second example, une chaise, a chair, de bois, bois is wood, of wood, okay, so in that case, un rideau de lin, Une chaise de bois, so when you want to introduce the fact that these things are made of something, then you will have to use this preposition de. Okay? And then the use. For instance, here, une station de métro. Une station de métro. Other possibility, une place de parking. Sorry about that, but, well, French people tend to use this parking as well. So, I know it's coming from English, but still you should pronounce it the French way. Parking. Une place de parking. Okay? And the last one, un studio d'enregistrement. Okay? Enregistrement is recording. Un studio d'enregistrement. So, as you can see in that case, as usual in French, as we saw previously, we've got this de, but then... As enregistrement is starting with a vowel, then a uh, needs to go away. Okay? So, une station de métro, une place de parking, un studio d'enregistrement. Okay? So, that's this use concept. So, what you use these things for. Okay? So, une place de parking, un studio d'enregistrement. Normally, we tend to use as well this uh, preposition de when we combine or when we use these uh, superlatives things. So, for instance, here, le plus beau film de tous les temps, of all time. Okay, so, le plus beau, okay, most beautiful, beau is beautiful, film, movie, de tous les temps, of all times. Le plus beau film de tous les temps. Okay, and then, la plus grande, grande, big, Avenue du monde. And in that case, you can see that you combine this de and then the article le monde, le monde, the world, okay? De le becomes du, okay? So du monde of the world. La plus grande avenue du monde. Okay, so for all these superlatives constructions, then remember you will have to use this preposition de, okay? De tous les temps. Du monde. And so keep in mind that it's also possible to combine and uh, some adjectives will require this preposition de, as we had previously, some adjectives will require the preposition, uh, the preposition a, okay, and it will be exactly the same with the de, so for instance, étonné, astonished, then we put de, okay. Content, happy, de. Désolé, sorry, de. Okay, so as I said, and it will come after that for the verbs, uh, try to remember them 
when you encounter them or when you read them okay that's the only way to really remember them so and for the verbs exactly the same thing so parler de remember we had the example with parler so parler à to talk to parler de to talk about something so parler de for instance s'excuser de okay to excuse oneself s'excuser promettre to promise de okay so these verbs will be constructed with the preposition de la préposition en Okay, so remember, previous lesson we saw la préposition de, the lesson before it was la préposition a, and in the next lesson we'll discover, uh, well, quite many uh, other prepositions. Okay, so let's start with la préposition en right now. So la préposition en can be used to express this to uh, concept in English. For instance, je vais en ville, okay, Alex to go, and then ville is town okay so je vais en ville or then nous voyageons voyager is to travel en espagne spain okay so in that case when you want to well express this to concept in english uh, in many cases we'll use this en preposition okay other use could be this in for instance j'habite en finlande Habiter is to live, okay, I live in Finland, j'habite en Finlande. Je fais l'exercice en cinq minutes, okay, so I do, okay, faire is to do, l'exercice, the exercise, in five minutes. Okay, so in that case, and it's quite important, when you use this in, so en here, it will mean the time you need to make the exercise okay so you don't want to express that you will do that in five minutes so after five minutes but really if you use this preposition on in that case it is to express the, the the time that you need to make this exercise all right so in like that en Finlande and then en, en cinq minutes Let's see now for the countries. So in many uh, cases we'll have, so as you, we, we, we saw in a previous lesson, we've got the difference between for the countries between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural countries. Okay, so in many cases when the country is ending with this vowel en here, okay, uh, sorry, e uh, and e uh, and e uh, here, it will mean that it is feminine okay we've got exceptions of course because <laughs> French language is quite tricky so we've got exceptions like uh, Mexique for instance it's uh, masculine okay but in many cases it will mean that it's feminine if it's feminine then you will have to use this preposition en if you want to express this in concept okay en France en Espagne, en Allemagne, en Italie. Okay, and now we'll read it with the liaison if needed. En France, en Espagne, en Allemagne, en Italie. Okay, so if you want to express this in with countries and only feminine countries, then you should use this en preposition. Okay, and then when we're talking about the seasons, well, We've got four seasons, and as usual in French, we need to have one exception, okay? But then, for the three others, it will be en, okay? En été, so in summer, été is summer. Then en automne, okay, autumn. And then en hiver, okay, make the little liaison here. En hiver, hiver is winter. Au printemps, okay, so keep in mind that for printemps, you will have to use au and not en, okay? And then printemps is spring, okay? En été, en automne, en hiver, au printemps, all right? Another use of this preposition en is to express the mean of transports, and then if you want to say, I'm coming with my car, by car, okay, in French we will use this preposition 
en. Ok, je viens, venir is to come, je viens, I come, ok, by car, en voiture. Tu voyages en train. Okay, and well, we saw in uh, the the lesson when we when we saw this uh, preposition a, we saw that for uh, uh, pied, for instance, foot, and then uh, we saw that uh, motorcycle, moto, and then uh, bicycle, vélo. In these cases, we use the preposition a. Okay, but then keep in mind that well, let's say that the main difference is uh, if you want to use this preposition normally we tend to use it if we express or if we introduce after that a uh, mean of transport that uh, will mean that you will be inside it okay so you are inside the car you are inside the train uh, if it would be a um, metro it would be exactly the same if would if it would be a tramway tram it would be exactly the same you would use this on just because you are inside Okay, so that's the reason why we make well the difference between en and then a. Okay, so you will use this a if you're talking bicycle or motorbike or then uh, by foot, of course. Okay, but then for this voiture, train, you will use this en. Okay, I hope it was clear. Uh, other use is uh, the languages. Okay, so for instance, il parle en espagnol. Parler is to talk, okay, or to speak. He speaks in Spanish, en espagnol. Or then, ce livre, this book, est en anglais. This book is in English, okay, en anglais. Other use is uh, when you want to introduce the material, it is uh, something is made of, okay. So, for instance, une montre, montre is a watch, une montre, en Or, okay, so gold, or, okay, so if you want to say that this watch is made of gold, then une montre en or. Un bateau en plastique. Bateau, it's a boat, and then plastic is plastic. So, un bateau en plastique. If you want to express the situation, you are in, okay, so, for instance, to be late, être en retard. Être en retard, ok? And then the other option here, uh, être en avance. Alright, so if you're coming earlier, then être en avance. Être en vacances, to be on holiday, so être en vacances. So in all these situations, like en retard, en vacances, en avance, we will use this preposition en, ok? And then... Maybe the last use that I wanted to introduce is uh, what we call the gérondif. So it's a bit tricky because uh, we didn't yet see this uh, participe présent. It will come soon, don't worry. But then uh, I just wanted to be honest with you and introduce it even if we didn't so yet, uh, we didn't see yet the participe présent. So we will construct this gérondif. So the, the meaning of the gérondif is when you want to introduce, so two actions so we, we we would say action simultané so technically two actions that take place at the same time okay and the way we construct that is well of course because it's the the lesson so the preposition la preposition en and then after that you will put this participe présent form that you don't know yet how to make but we'll see that in a coming lesson okay but then i will make Anyway, an example, and this is the example, je téléphone, okay, so in the first sentence or in the first part of the sentence, you say je téléphone, téléphone is to call, okay, and then we have here our gérondif form, so first you get your preposition, en, and then you get your participe présent form, so marchand, okay, and if you look carefully, it's coming from the verb marcher, marcher is to walk, Okay, dans la rue. All right, so je téléphone en marchant dans la rue. So in that structure, you want to introduce the fact that you are making a phone call, you are calling someone, and at the same time, you are walking in the street. Okay, je téléphone 
en marchant dans la rue. All right? So that's the technique we've got to express two action that take place at the same time it's this gérondif okay and then we construct this gérondif with the, prepo the preposition en okay les prépositions so just to remind you we've been seeing uh, first in the previous lesson la préposition en then before la préposition de and even before la préposition a and in this video In this video, sorry, we'll see not the rest, of course, of all the prepositions, but the main prepositions that we will have in uh, French language. Okay, so let's start now. And the first one that we'll see is pour, and pour means for. Okay, so we'll see two examples here. Ce café est pour vous. Okay, so ce café, this coffee, est, is pour, for, vous, you. Ce café est pour vous. Second example, je voudrais louer cette voiture pour deux jours. Okay, so remember, here we've got this conditional form. So, I would like to louer, means to rent, cette voiture, this car, pour deux jours, for two days. Okay, je voudrais louer cette voiture pour deux jours. Okay, second Preposition or next one, sans, and it means without. Okay, so two examples. Elle voyage sans ses valises. Voyages to travel, so she travels sans, without ses valises, her luggages. Il vient sans son chien. Venir, here is to come, so he comes sans, without son chien, his dog. Okay. Après, you can translate it by after, okay, and then, je viens après la réunion. Venir is to come, je viens, I come, après, after, la réunion, the meeting. Je viens après la réunion, okay. Then, avant means before. Il arrive avant toi. Arriver to arrive, he arrives, avant Before, toi, you. Remember, this is what we call this pronoun tonique. Okay, so it's you. Depuis means since or for. Okay, examples. Nous vivons ici depuis 2011. Okay, nous vivons, vivre is to live. Nous vivons, we live, ici, here, depuis, since. And then you put 2011, you just put the year. Okay? So, assuming the fact that we are still now in uh, 2012, so 2012, we could use this sentence as well. Nous vivons ici depuis un an. Okay? So, in that case, you can use this depuis as well. And then you will introduce un an just because we've been arriving in 2011 and we are now in 2012. Okay, so, depuis un an. Derrière means behind. Okay, so, the example could be, le ballon est derrière l'arbre. Le ballon, the ball, est, is, derrière, behind, l'arbre, the tree. Okay, un arbre, a tree. Le ballon est derrière l'arbre. And after that, we can see devant. Devant means in front of. Okay, in front of. And then the example could be, mon collègue, my colleague, est assis, is seated, devant le directeur. Le directeur, the director. Mon collègue est assis devant le directeur. Jusque means until. Example, je reste au bureau jusqu'à 17 heures. Okay, rester is to stay, au bureau, at the office. Je reste au bureau jusqu'à, until, 17 heures. Okay, so you can see that here it's quite interesting because normally we should have this jusqu written like that. But then if you look carefully after that, we've got this a, 
okay another preposition and then you remember the rule when you've got vowel and vowel normally what happens is that this final a uh, will go away and then we'll put sorry we'll put apostrophe so that's the reason why we get this jusqu'à okay and then phonetically jusqu'à okay je reste au bureau jusqu'à 17 heures Sous means under. Simple example. Le livre est sous la table. Le livre, the book, est, is, sous, under, la table, the table. Le livre est sous la table. Sur means on. Okay, and then we've got two examples here. L'ordinateur est sur la table. So, l'ordinateur, the computer, est, is, sur, on, la table, the table. The computer is on the table, sur, here. But then, remember, or keep in mind that it's also possible to use this sur if we're talking about the wall, for instance. So, we could say, l'affiche, so, affiche is poster, l'affiche est sur le mur. All right, so it could be for la table or any other things like that, and then, then as well for the, le mur, okay, sur le mur. Avec, so the classic one, means with. Elle parle avec son frère. Parler is to talk. Son frère, her brother. Elle parle, she talks, avec, with, her brother, son frère. Elle parle avec son frère. She, so this one is quite interesting because if you really want to translate it, so you're talking about the place, okay, but then you're talking about someone's place. So it's the place connected to a person. So let's see a few examples now. Je suis chez moi. So if you want to say that you are at your place, then you should use this she, okay, and then here in that case, you will put this moi, so pronotonic. Je suis chez moi. Okay, so this is the first use that you could have. Okay, if you want to introduce this chez and then use the name of someone, it's possible, like here. Nous sommes invités chez Laurent. Okay, so we are invited at Laurent's place, if you want to translate it directly, okay? So that's the way we will use, if we've got a name and we want to introduce the fact that it's at the place of this person, then it's she, okay? And so it's it will work the same way if we want to talk about, for instance, here, the doctor, or then we can say le boulanger, le boucher. Normally we tend to use this she if we're talking about whether little shops or offices and traditionally or before the person used to live whether above or then behind or in this place okay so that's the reason why we tend to use this she okay because it is connected to the person more than to the the shop itself so il va chez le médecin il va chez le médecin contre means against one example nous sommes contre cette décision okay this decision and it's nous sommes we are we are against this decision nous sommes contre cette décision dans so you can it means in inside or into okay so let's see now alexandre est dans la voiture. Ok? Alexandre is dans, inside, in la voiture, the car. Ok? Nous entrons dans le magasin. Entrer, to enter, to go inside. Ok? Dans le magasin, the shop. Ok? Par, will mean by or per. For example, une lettre envoyée par la poste. Okay, une lettre, a letter, envoyée, sent, par la poste, by mail. Okay, so in that case, you get to use this, 
par, ok? It could be par euh, courrier électronique, by email if you want, ok? Je mange cinq fruits et légumes par jour, ok? So in that case, it would be this per day, ok? Par jour. Je mange, I eat, cinq, five fruits, fruits et légumes, légumes is vegetables, par jour, ok? Per day. Je mange cinq fruits et légumes par jour. Pendant means during. Il dort pendant le film. Ok? Dormir is to sleep. Pendant, during, le film, the movie. Il dort pendant le film. Vers, so you don't pronounce the final S, means Towards or about. Je vais vers la station de métro. Ok, so I am walking. In that case, because I used to say je vais. So, I'm sorry, it's aller. Ok, je vais vers la station de métro. So, I go. So you can walk or maybe you could drive, or in fact. But then, je vais, I go towards, donc la station de métro. Okay, or well, then it would be possible to use it as well if you get this sentence. Nous avons rendez-vous vers 15 heures. Okay, nous avons rendez-vous. So, avoir rendez-vous, it's when you have a meeting. Okay, so avoir, to have, and then rendez-vous. Remember that in French, it's not... It's not so romantic at all. You know, you can have a rendezvous at your dentist, for instance. So, it's like we have a meeting. Vers, around, about, okay, 15 heures, okay. So, you just want to say that it's not, you know, 15 heures précise, okay, but it's about or around. Voici, could be translated with... This is, okay? So, and we tend to use it quite often if we introduce persons. So, voici mon ami Frédéric. And then normally, you know, it goes with voilà, okay? And then voilà will mean there is, okay? So, I did make this little example, so I took back this. Voici mon ami Frédéric et voilà mon ami Arnaud. Ok, so voilà, normally will come after voici. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, leçon N. And in this lesson we'll see together les temps composés. So we won't discover them because uh, I thought it might be uh, useful to take the time to review what we saw so far, especially when we're talking about les temps composés. Composé, so all these tenses that are composed tenses, okay? So, and so far, we've been seeing first le passé composé, then we saw le plus que parfait, after that came le futur antérieur, and finally we saw le conditionnel passé. And so, the common thing that we have Uh, between all these tenses is that they are composed, okay? So, they will be construct the same way, but then, of course, few things will change. Obviously, the first part that we get to use, avoir and être, will change, but then the rest, construction with the participe passé, will be the same, okay? So, we'll first start with the passé composé, okay? So, and if you remember, The rule was that first we will use avoir. So if you're not really sure, if you don't remember the, 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 if the verb requires être or not, then put avoir. Avoir should be at the present form. Then you will put your participe passé form and you will get this passé composé. Okay? Remember that in some cases, but we're talking about exceptions or Uh, reflexive verbs, you know, these se, blah, blah, blah. So, you will have to use être and at the present tense as well, plus le participe passé, and you will get this passé composé. Okay? So, of course, it looks simple like that, but then in some cases, and especially after learning so many things, maybe you don't really remember the, the, the conjugation of avoir and être at the present tense. So, we'll take the time to review that one more time. So, remember, avoir at the present tense goes like 
j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Ok, so, j'ai, tu as, final S not pronounced, il a, elle a, nous avons, final S not pronounced, and then we make this little link between the two, nous avons, vous avez, a Z at the end will produce this A sound, avez, little link between the two, vous avez, ils ont, ok, final T not pronounced, and then we make the liaison, ils ont, elles ont. Alright, so this is for avoir at the present tense. And now, être at the present tense, je suis, tu es, il est, elle est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. Ok, so, je suis, final S not pronounced, tu es, ok, so it's quite strange because you get this ES, but then phonetically it's E, alright, quite open, tu es. Il est, exactly the same sound as we had previously, ok, so just remember that you write it like that, but then phonetically it goes like E, elle est. Nous sommes, final S not pronounced, vous êtes, little liaison to be between the two and then final S not pronounced, ils sont, final T not pronounced, elles sont. Alright, so that's the main, main thing you should remember. Of course, the participe passé, but then we won't cover that in this lesson because we've been, I've been, I mean, I've been making a big, big video on that. So try to search it in the, the channel uh, search engine, and you will find it. Okay. So let's see now. Le plus que parfait. So remember, it was exactly the same rule. So first, avoir. If you're not sure, just put avoir. But avoir should be at the imparfait form. Then the participe passé, so you will get your plus que parfait, okay? And for the same exceptions, we'll have être, at the imparfait form, and then the participe passé, and it will give you the plus que parfait. Okay, so for the same reasons, we will see together avoir at the imparfait and être at the imparfait, just to make sure that it's clear for you. And avoir at the imparfait will give j'avais. Tu avais, il avait, elle avait, nous avions, vous aviez, ils avaient, elles avaient. Ok, so, j'avais, final S not pronounced, tu avais, final S not pronounced, il avait, final T not pronounced, elle avait. So, exactly the same phonetical thing here, it's avait. Nous avions, final S not pronounced, and then little liaison, nous avions. Vous aviez, a Z at the end, et, aviez, and then liaison, vous aviez, ils avaient, so look here, E, N, T, you write them, you don't pronounce them, so you get phonetically, avait, exactly the same thing that we had here, here, and here, okay, so it's exactly the same thing that you will pronounce, but then here you make the liaison, ils avaient, elles avaient, okay, let's see how, être goes, j'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était, nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Alright, so exactly the same rule, remember final S, here, here, final T, and then here, E, N, T, you don't pronounce them, so you will get était, okay, for all these forms, ok? J'étais, tu étais, il était, elle était. Same rule here, final S not pronounced and then you make the liaison. Nous étions, vous étiez, ils étaient, elles étaient. Ok? Make the liaison here as well. Ils étaient, elles étaient. Alright? So, this is the thing you should remember. Now, The other tense we saw was uh, futur antérieur, and futur antérieur, remember, exactly the same construction, but then avoir should be conjugated at the future, the futur, and then le participe passé, and it will give you futur antérieur. Or then, 
for exactly the same exceptions and the same cases you will use être but then être should be at the future tense plus le participe passé and it will give you le futur antérieur so what we'll see we'll see exactly the same thing as we saw previously for the other tenses so or the other uh, yeah tenses so we'll see the future form for avoir and then the future form for être okay and for avoir it will go like j'aurai tu auras il aura elle aura nous aurons vous aurez ils auront elles auront okay so have a look now j'aurai tu auras final s not pronounced il aura elle aura nous aurons final s not pronounced and then you make the liaison vous aurez a z at the end here et aurez liaison here vous aurez ils auront final t not pronounced elles auront okay and then for être we will get je serai tu seras il sera elle sera nous serons vous serez ils seront elles seront okay so one more time je serai tu seras final s not pronounced il sera elle sera nous serons final s not pronounced vous serez a z at the end et serez ils seront final t not pronounced elles seront all right so this is the future tense for avoir and être okay and now the last composed tense we saw was le conditionnel passé and so remember that le conditionnel passé will go like that so first as we saw previously avoir in priority at the conditionnel present form then you put your participe passé and you will get your conditionnel passé or for the same cases as we had previously for passé composé, futur antérieur, or then plus que parfait, être, but in that case it should be at the conditionnel present form, then the participe passé, and you will get your conditionnel passé form. So let's see now uh, uh, how avoir and être are at the conditionnel present, just to refresh your memory, and it goes like that. J'aurais... Tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so one more time. J'aurais, final S not pronounced, tu aurais, same thing here, il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced, so phonetically exactly the same form here. Nous aurions, final S not pronounced, and then you get this liaison, nous aurions. Vous auriez, a z at the end, et auriez, and then the liaison, vous auriez. Ils auraient, remember, ENT, you don't pronounce it, auraient, ils auraient, elles auraient. Alright, so this is for avoir, and then let's see, être. Je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Okay, so let's see. How it goes. Je serai, final S not pronounced. Tu serai, same thing here. Il serait, elle serait, final T not pronounced. Nous serions, final S not pronounced. Vous seriez, a Z at the end, et seriez. Il serait, so a N T not pronounced, elle serait. Alright, so this is the first part that you should use when you come, when you make, sorry, this uh, conditionnel passé form, okay? That's it for les temps composés. If you've got some doubts, uh, remember I've been making uh, videos regarding each uh, of these tenses, so it's possible to find them. Uh, if you want more video or other videos, then remember youtube.com slash imagier is here, and then more material if you want to find, uh, well, other things, softwares or pictures or flashcards, imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.